Broncos. <laughs> there's a lot of truth to it. I mean, there's a lot of risk involved and there's a lot of reward. The reality is I'd rather be an early adopter than a pioneer. Do you change your maps coach every year? No, I'm, I'm not going to ever change mine. So, you, so that's the one you had or you? No, you know? so I've had three different maps coaches. Um, the first one I was with about a year and um, it was Brad Korn, he's out of St. Louis, Missouri, and he's a database guy, and I'm a spirit of influence guy, so it worked really well for a little while. And then at some point, I had outgrown him, and there was only so much more I could listen to about database, because that's really all he talked about. And that's also where I learned the difference between, and Gary calls it, the difference between a, um, what's the word he uses? A seminarist right so a lot of coaches aren't coaches they just do seminars and eventually they run out of material where the real coach actually is going to ask you a lot of questions and really dig down to the root of the issue so Brad was a good seminarist and he was good for me for about a year then I got a guy named Bill Crespo uh, Bill's not with maps anymore he's actually the reason that I have Brian um, Bill I was with Bill for about a year, and Bill's a hardcore prospecting guy, and I'm really not. I'm more of a networking, spirit of influence, social media kind of person, so we had to have a couple of conversations pretty early on, because um, I basically told him, look, I, don't, I really don't want a coaching call to start off with, how many calls you made this week? Like, I lead generate, this shows up, but I don't cold call. And I think he expected me to call expires every day. And I think I've called one. I've called expires for one week. It was my first time in bold. And that was it after that. I was like, yeah, I'm good. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, we get so hung up on, and coaches do this too. We get so hung up on you should do this and you should do this and you should do this. The reality is, is if I'm sitting here telling you I'm not going to, Maybe don't force somebody to do something that they won't do. I'm not talking about being uncomfortable. I'm talking about hate it. <laughs> right? At the same time, you've got to go find something you can do and will do and replace it. So for me, it's not about what you do. It's about how many times you do it. What you try this on expands. Yeah. So um, <laughs> finally, Bill was like, okay, so what can I help you with then? And I was like, how about teach me to be a leader? Because that's really what I need right now for our business. And so we worked at that a lot. Um, and then he left MAPS. And when he left MAPS, I had the option to go with him or stay with MAPS. And I wanted to be a MAPS coach, so I knew I wouldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So they paired me up with uh, <laughs> the interesting thing is they paired me up. I told him I wanted an agent that was a pirate with expansion. But that's what Kristen called her top group. Mm -hmm. So like early adopters for expansion. Because I felt like I had a lot to learn there. And they paired me up with a guy, great guy, his name's David Hoffman. David's in the office next to me. And I was like, okay, I don't see this being a great coach-client relationship. Um, and I never wanted to be able to go into a house and compete against him. And that could happen. We live literally a half mile from each other. Like, we have similar spheres of influence. So I called Maps and I was like, okay, so I love David and this won't work. Um, so the next person that called me was Brian Gubernick and he'll be my coach as long as Brian will coach me. Period, end of story. So that's been my progression through Maps. Um, and, and I'll say this, and this isn't walking the company line here, but this is more about you guys. Maps has gotten watered down. As Maps has grown, the coaches have grown. So if you get it, if, MAPS is a great organization, but it's just like any organization. Um, if you get in MAPS and you don't have the right coach for you, tell them and get it switched. Give them an opportunity to fix it. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Do other people on the team have MAPS coaches? Or do you <coughs> yeah, Mark does. And we just actually, we've been- Same coach, different coach? Same coach. That's another thing too. If if you're going to get your people a coach, they should probably be speaking from the same handbook. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of my non-negotiables for getting Mark a match contract. That's 
back to your focus on regeneration as a productivity coach if you don't like calling them expires or doing the traditional things, how would you encourage, how do you encourage your clients, your PC clients, um, to regenerate if they have the same idea that you do that they don't just dislike it, they hate it? Okay, so what do you like to Where you can talk to people? Well, if somebody asked you, you know, the, the the quickest returns are the people that are already frustrated, not that's able to That's different. That's a different question. True. Right. If you need to generate business quickly, the best way to do that is expired listings. Okay, so you would encourage people to do that. For no, I would just explain that. Here's that, the, that, that's the, the, the trade-offs. What's right. your goal? Right. You need to do it. Yeah. No. I mean, quit, again, right? my job as a coach is not to tell someone how to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's to help them dig it out of themselves. So when you were building your business, even though you hated the expires and calling on the expires, did you just do it anyway because it was quick? It was it was the way to. No, I did it because I didn't know any fire. better, <laughs> and I was in bold, and I was like, "Well, this is what I'm supposed to do this week." But then I realized real quickly, okay, so bold, you're doing something different every week. So the reality is, you're not going to do that same thing every time. So then it just became so basically all bold is teaching me is to get 100 contacts a week, and there's six different ways. So as long as I get 100 a week, how does it matter? And so that's, so my second time through Bold, I was probably that guy. I'm sure Wayne Sammons hated me for a minute. Um, because I wasn't, like I would come and I would do my thing. Uh, like I would turn in my contracts. I was actually a team leader, but I wasn't role playing expired because I knew I wasn't gonna call them. And I wasn't role playing for seven honors because I knew I wasn't gonna go visit me. My focus is completely on sphere. So that's my one thing. So networking group, my people, Fraternity brothers, like I've got 500 fraternity brothers in Charlotte. Like that's enough people where you can do some damage. So mine was just getting in front of the right people, identifying who my core advocates were. That was really, that's all I've ever done. And if you see that you track it and that's where you're getting your business, that's where you're getting Yeah, if it business. all of a sudden stopped, yeah. then okay, cool, yeah, I gotta figure out something, something else. else. And it's not that I, I mean, if I had to call expireds, I would. I don't have to, so I'm not going to. And the reason that sphere of influence is so high on your chart is because that's where you focused, and that's you've made that work. Well, but I think my personality goes to that also. <laughs> I mean, it's it's two things. It's not. It's the okay. So the desire to do it and the skill set to do it match up. Mm -hmm. Somebody. CRN. What did you use when you were starting off? Did you use Edge? And and how long did you stick with that before you? Until Boomtown last year. Okay. Or I guess a year and a half ago, something like and that. And now you're just your Boomtown, so. Boomtown's just stupid expensive. Well, so there's a couple of things. One, Boomtown is really expensive. The other is we're now in multiple cities. Mm -hmm. So like they want fifteen hundred dollars a month per location. Yeah. And I can't get it in Charleston. They won't even let you have it. Like it doesn't matter if I paid ten thousand dollars a month, they won't let you have it because the owner. Of, so Boomtown's from Charleston, and the owner of the company, his brother, is owns a brokerage, and so they they have it. No one else can have it. So I've actually Brian's good friends with this guy because they've done some deals together. Because a lot of the pirate group now is on Boomtown, okay. right? And they're cutting special deals for that but they wouldn't even allow me to have it in Charleston. So I was like, all right, I'm done with you guys. So then it became, we're gonna use one platform across all of our locations, what's it gonna be? And that's where you're using it with your website, mm -hmm. base two? Okay, you yeah. said it was different, but it's <coughs> using that as your CRM. So what made you decide to make the change from email to the original? Uh, leads, the number of leads I could generate online. Okay. With without working at it, yeah. just paying for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do you use a dialer? Yeah, Mojo. Do you, okay, so we use Mojo, and we're trying, or not trying, You're we right. are intending and transitioning from everybody in E-Edge and all the notes in E-Edge into Mojo. Do you call your sphere of influence through Mojo? So, um, the team has done a lot of transitioning over the last, call it 45 or 60 days, 
<coughs> while I've been out of it. When we've added a bunch of new agents in the last month or so, we've gone to, so the one thing that I hated, I've always hated this, um, about managing other people is that self-reported data is only as good as what they tell you. Mm -hmm. So then we put everybody on a dialer and quit dealing with self-reported. Yeah. Because <laughs> we had agents, I'm making my call, or, you know, they I haven't the closed the deal in a month or two. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why haven't you closed the deal in a month or two? Well, I'm doing all my lead gen. Okay, are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm making all my calls. Okay, so show me you're making it. Well, I don't, I'm just using my phone. You know, it just gets, you can it's see it happening. Like it's a train wreck in front of you happening, right. but they don't see it. Yeah, yeah. So we just said, all right, it's everybody's going to die. There's no clarity with it. Right, so if you, want lead, if you want us to pass you leads, you have to lead generate on the daughter. Gotcha. That's good. So if you don't want us to generate leads, then great, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. Okay. Sort of. As long as you as long as you're up, as long as you do it with our standards. Who are they calling? Your sphere guy, are they calling Spear? Most of them, because I think the reality is most of the people you recruit are similar to you they anyway. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of circle prospecting right now, like a lot. Okay. What is the what does their schedule look like when they come in? Like say from their first day. Mark. Yeah. <laughs> he, I mean, honestly, he knows more about it than I do now. Um, we have team lead generation on Mondays and Fridays. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, they're on their own. So we expect them in the office Mondays and Fridays. Because that's when we have sales meeting on Monday. We do a lot of door walk, a lot of door knocking and walking neighborhoods on Friday as groups. Is that so you have your buyer agents do that? They go door knock on Friday? See, I don't like the way you say you have them do that. That's how they choose to lead generate. Okay. They're more comfortable doing that than they are cold calling, so right. here's the choices you pick. As long as they're doing something yeah. and it's generating business. Yeah, and the funny part is they think door knocking generates a lot more than it does. I, I can show them the numbers, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> door knocking, we've done two deals door knocking this year. <laughs> but they do it every Friday. <laughs> Now, is it possible that some of those get coded incorrectly? Sure. Yeah, it's possible. I really, like real estate's a context for As long as they're out talking about real estate, to a degree, I don't care, right? I know they're making enough calls because we have enough leads coming in off of Mojo. Does that make sense? So my dad likes to talk about how much business he generates, so I track that too. <laughs> And that's, that's being facetious because he's in some of these networking groups here and then he does generate business. But I like to give him a like time. Give time. <laughs> so with the, with the PC program, with you overall running that, and you know, you, you know, you get new agents coming in, they just finished Ignite. I mean, I have some that just kind of run out of the door. Oh my God, I don't want to make phone calls. I want to, you know, it scares them. There's a lot of things that intimidate them. What are you doing to help people get over the hump um, to get comfortable of being uncomfortable. Script practice is <laughs> That's the, That's the one thing in our market center in the last 60 days that has, I really think, changed the production level of our brand new agents. So um, we have all of our coaches. So I lead Monday. I think PJ Kennedy leads Tuesday. Karen Scully leads Wednesday. We have Bold on Thursday, so we don't do anything on Thursday, and then Friday, Lindsay Peg. So all of us coach one of the groups. And so 8.30, they come in and we do script practice, and then at 9 o'clock, they start calling people. Um, and we track, you, you've seen it online, I'm sure, but we track the number of contacts, the number of leads, and the number of appointments set, and then show them what that looks like on a potential GCI basis. And it, it's motivating. Um, the one thing I will tell them about We've got a 19-year-old agent, like just got out of high school in May. And um, we were, in, we were in power hour one morning, and I looked down, and everybody's making calls. we got the music going, and he's just sitting there, like staring at a piece of paper. And I walked up, and I was like, hey, Sam, what's up? And he goes, man, I've called four people. I can't get anybody on the phone. All my friends are at college, or they're working right now, and I'm, I'm, I can't talk to anybody. And I was like, all right, so you've made four calls, 
and you've gotten zero responses. The reality is, is that you should probably only get one pickup for every 10 people you call during the day. So do me a favor and make six more calls, and let's just see what happens. And like three minutes later, he jumps up on top of his seat and goes, I got one. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool, so what'd you learn there? And he said, so what he learned, and this is what he told me, and it really meant a lot to me, what he learned is that he would have quit if he was by himself. That's the power of power hour, is you're in an environment where everybody's doing some things and they're all being productive, and it's really, really easy to get frustrated and quit when you're doing it by yourself. So that's been my big takeaway from Power Hour. So that's what we were doing it two days a week then. That's the day we went to every day. Okay, yeah. We do it twice. Yeah. How did you get people to come? <laughs> Create value. That's, I mean, it's really funny. The first, the first week I took over PC, um, I went to one of the groups, and there were like 30 people in this group and five showed up for their group coaching. And I looked at the coach and said, so what's the deal here? Why are they not showing up to your group? And he goes, so what you're gonna learn is participation is always the toughest thing. And I was like, I don't ever wanna hear that again. What they're basically telling you is that they don't see enough value to make it a part of their day. So you need to own that, not them. And what you have to do as a coach or whatever, you have to provide enough value to where they say, I don't want to miss this today. And that will flip that perception real fast. So we got out when with buyer script book, when with seller script book, Ignite script book, and all of our scripts are coming out of there. So they know what we're talking about. And, and here's the thing, I think what a lot of people think is, all we're doing is practicing expired scripts. And then we're making them call expired listings. You can call it whoever you want to call, I don't care what you do. And the scripts that we're using are listing appointment scripts, buyer consultation scripts, overcoming objection scripts, closing scripts. Like, there are very few actual lead generation scripts. And so it's taking the hex off of it a little bit. And they're starting to tell everybody while learning that. And, and the other thing, too, is they're getting up in team meeting, and when we do bucket filling, they're bucket filling these coaches. They're saying, hey, PJ Kennedy was awesome today at script practice. Here's what I learned. And uh, we had one lady that said, so I emailed Jay last week and told him that I thought I was going to discontinue the coaching program. And then I went to script practice, and then I did power hour, and my first four contacts I generated four appointments. So I told I emailed Jay back and told him, never mind. <laughs> like those are the stories that we're having, and it's really fun. So we don't, I mean, I don't think you have to make them. You just have to make it cool enough where it's part of their day. So we we have a lot of fun. Every once in a while, I'll bring in some donuts. Um, I crank music on a speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker, out of my office. Um, I don't know. We just make a party, and everybody. How has many fun. people do you have show up for Power Hour? Twenty-five or thirty. Out of Consistent. Of support, five hundred. Yeah. The way, and the way I look at that is it's, 20, it's 25 people who wouldn't be generated if we didn't have it. And it's, and it's consistently growing. It started out at three or four. Do you know if anybody's ever tried virtual power hour? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I just, I think there is something to the environment. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, CGI, how plugged in is your team? Per, are you personally not, into CGI? Not, not, not at all. Because um, <laughs> so we've got a lot of buyers agents, and yeah. it's only tracking listing plans. Mm -hmm. So for teams and for expansion, it doesn't work that well. Mm -hmm. For individual agents, I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I coach to it a lot. Mm -hmm. In your Dropbox, do you have like job duty tasks? Lists, I mean, uh, job descriptions for I your doubt EA it. And like I doubt it. Because we just pulled those off of um, like yeah. what they're supposed to be. RSTL in the now yeah. career division. Okay, career division. What kind of business do you have to do to get the Gary's master bond and be in that circle that, that you get this? So you product? have to be a match coach. You have to. I think he's trying to say now that you have to be KBU certified again. Um, 
because he wants his people coaching and teaching the rest of his agents. That's, that's Gary's deal with his masterminds. He knows he can't teach 140,000 people. What he can do is teach 100 people and have them go teach 140,000 people. That's really his purpose behind it. Um, you have to be a match coach with at least two clients. You have to go to um, you have to go to career visiting once a year. You have to go to coach a skills camp once a year. You have to go to um, family reunion mega camp. You have to go to you have to have a match coach now. And then you have to either be in the top 100 or in production, or you have to have active expansion, one or the other. The other question I have is, you know, you're very successful. You're doing awesome. I mean, why the heck are you still hanging out on the ALC all these years? Because, you know, is that that? Then they get in the way of your business? I look at it, and, no, I mean, no. I look at that in two ways. One is too much, to whom much is given, much is expected. And the other is... Everything I've done has been really strategically um, planned to continue to elevate exposure for me. So the first way I knew how to do that was get on ALC. And the second way was um, regional ALC and become a KWU certified instructor and be able to go out and teach. So then more and more team leaders and OPs and other ALC members and team owners know who I am. Um, after that, it was, um, one of my big deals was trying to get on stage somewhere, whether it's Mega Camp or Family Union or whatever. Um, and then after that, it was become a MAPS coach because it's, it's a pretty tight knit community. And after that, it was expansion and Gary's mastermind. So it's just continued to make, create relationships with people who can take you where you want to go. I mean, I know that's, it sounds very, I don't know, I guess on some level it even sounds very self-serving, but the reality is, is I continue to give back, and the more, I'm, the more I'm giving, the more I do give back, I think. So that's the way I look at it. Um, you know, one of the reasons I took the PC job is A, it's an opportunity to build another business, but B, it's an opportunity to be in business with Brenda. And where can that take me? Where can that, what does that lead to? What opportunities will open up from that? You know, we kind of have a unique opportunity here, like having you come and then Lance Logan's coming. You know, and, and some people go, well, Michelle, you know, I'm not going to be a $40 million producer. Or I'm not going to be 475. What, what's the benefit for people to come and hear and listen you, Lance, um, you know, the other people we brought in, Linda McKissick. Why is it worth to travel for that for an hour and a half? Why, what's That's a really good question. So I think one of the things that I've discovered real quickly is you can, you can learn to the point where you're not learning as much inside your own market center. So you have to go outside the market center, so think regionally. And then at some point you outgrow that a little bit and you need to start going to travel to, like, go hear Seth Campbell do career visioning. It's a completely different class when he's teaching it. Uh, go, hear, go hear Dick Dillingham do Quantum Leap. If you get an opportunity to go to Austin for anything, go to Austin. Not only because the instructor is going to be one of the best, but because the audiences are going to be some of the best. Right? Like, how many people have been on a plane to go to Austin just to train class? Okay, so five people out of 30 or 30, 35, right? Now imagine it's literally five people from five people from five people from five people from five people all over the country with the best market centers. Like that's the level of audience you get. So the, the reality is, is you don't get bogged down. You get to talk about things that are a lot cooler. You know, there's a 50-50 relationship between the trainer and the audience. And when the audience is upgraded, ten, the, ten, the trainer tends to be as well. So that's my thing. Once you I'm not saying don't take market center classes, right? But at some point, you got to go outside the market center. And it also helps build relationships. Does that make sense? I mean, I know it's, it, 
it goes back to everything we talk about. Real estate is pretty simple. It's just not easy. Also, another um, opportunity they have here that you guys can talk a little bit more about because of our relationship is CES, is CES and Candace Ensign, in which she brings the table in terms of agent expansion. And, and you know, because she's all these top people who are in agent expansion, Candace is plugged into. All these top people are looking at opportunities with you guys, you know. And if you come to some of these sessions and you, you'll learn more and more about that and what that can open up. Yeah, well. one of the things Candace and I talked about um, a few months ago, actually I guess at Mega Camp, was <laughs> she wrote down a list of the people she had relationships with and she wanted me to write down the list of people I had relationships with because I'm in expansion. And so how many of those people can we get to come to Charlotte or Kernsville that are interested in expanding into Carolinas and making this kind of their hub? Um, and the list is, there's some crazy people on this list, y'all. I mean, with some huge, huge production. Um, that's the one thing I think is going to change our industry in the next decade. Probably faster than that, but um, I really am concerned for what I'm going to call the middle agent. There's always going to be the agents out there that are doing eight to ten transactions a year from relationships that they know. Um, and there's always going to be, at this point, those huge mega teams. But the agents that are going to get pinched are the agents in the middle. Right, that have the, let's just call it four to 10, $12 million businesses. They're the ones that are gonna get pinched because they're the ones that tend to be very entrepreneurial. Um, they haven't become really purposeful with a lot of their business yet. They don't practice on a daily basis. They don't lead generate on a daily basis. They kind of take what comes to them. Um, and you've got people out there who are, I mean, you're gonna see in the next couple of years this huge, spread almost like a uh, almost like an epidemic kind of spread of expansion teams because they're all building and they're all building their cash flow and when it happens that you're going to start seeing people plug into market centers and when they do it's going to affect now some of you will be selected to be partners and others of you won't but the point is is that the people who are left standing it's kind of like when the music stops and there's one short chair who's going to be in the chair or who's gonna be standing, does that make sense? And that's, I'm not trying to scare you. What I'm trying to do is say, you better get really good at what you do because this business is changing fast. So you just categorize somebody that's doing $10, $20 million in volume as somebody that doesn't have purpose and is taking what comes? No, I said some of them. But you I would, can't have I know some volume. of them. I would agree with that. I would say that's my team. You're right. That's me too. Yeah, I, he was describing me. So $10, $10 million in volume, and I mean, how could that possibly be not purposeful? I don't spend two hours every morning lead generating. Yeah, and we, that's about your volume? That, that's yeah, you well, it. I'll be nine this year, and I hope to be 21 next year, but i got to get a lot more purposeful. Because you're going you're in a different, different stage, too. Your you're business is in a different right. stage right now, and you're about yeah, to explode yeah, yeah. more because you want to go, she wants to go to 75 units. This is only her second year in the business. She's getting ready to go make that big leap. And you're you're very purposeful more than you realize. You're, you're not just waking up every day and going, okay, what's going to fall on my lap? You get up every day and you lead generate and you make things happen. And you've already got your goal set. That's being purposeful as of entrepreneurial, just sitting around, oh, I got all these ideas and let's let them, let's let it fall in my lap. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not picking on anybody. I don't know anybody's production in this room. <clears throat> what I'm saying is that there's going to be a change in this industry. It's going to affect the people in the middle more than it affects the people on either spectrum. So that makes more sense. I mean, if you've got a team that's just sort of a, a team, a group of people that's at 10 or 12, but they're not being purposeful, they need to get on the train. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the middle ground is going to get pinched. Just like the middle class in America has been pinched, that's what's going to show up, right? Because, okay, so think about this, right? Tim Heil's got a warehouse full of people, and all they do is call eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. And he can put an agent in any market he wants to. And by the way, that call center is funded by agents, right? Because he's got a business of this that funds his expansion growth. You ever heard of Phone Animal? Yeah, so they'll, they'll sell you their ISAs. 
they'll let you license them and they'll call for you. And it sounds really great. You're only going to pay $2,000 a month. I think they've even got a program for $500 a month now. So, but the point is, is it's kind of like Uber, right? Uber's being funded by the drivers that it's intended to replace. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Gary talked about that at Mega Camp, by the way. 